Cathedral of Hope, we come to worship the God who greets us every day of our lives. We come to praise the God of our past, present, and future, to marvel at the miracles of creation and new beginnings in our world, and to make our hearts ready to receive God's message of hope and love. So rise, church, in body and spirit, for this is the day our God has made. Assemble here the divine reflection of your image and ask that your sweet spirit fill us all as you make all things new. Amen. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ that we greet this morning. Good morning, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Good morning. What a joy to welcome you on this beautiful Sunday morning, made even more beautiful because I go on vacation tomorrow morning. It really is a joy to welcome you. God bless you this morning. Uh, if you are here with us for the first time, he doesn't announce that very often, so we are grateful he gets some time off. Um, if you would like to um, meet with us, we'd love to have you connect. We have our Connect Center, follow the Connect Care Growth Signs. I said connect like four times, because we are passionate about having you meet us, know this place, and find yourself here, find the God that you are seeking here, and find relationships and friendships here. So we have a gift for you, as always. I'm not sure what color, but usually there's an option of, ooh, ah, there we go. Yeah, it matches. That's just lovely. Okay. Enjoy it. We also want to extend a very special welcome to all those who are worshiping online with us this morning. We're grateful for your presence. We know that uh, you connect with us as we try to connect with you, and so please know that you are welcome. Let us know that you've been with us this day, and also let us know if there's anything that we can be praying for or with in your life and your experience. But we are so grateful that through the wonders of the internet that you are able to be here and to share worship with us. Know that you are holy. Cathedral of Hope, please join me in welcoming all those who are worshiping online this morning. And please remind of, for you to get the Shift magazine. We have all of our summer offerings in it. Um, and also some wonderful articles, ways in which for you to know how to get involved, know how to serve more, and know how to grow more, know how to connect more. And so please pick up your Shift magazine on your way out. 
We also want to remind you that as we begin this new month, June is Pride Month throughout uh, the country. Now I know here in Dallas we do things a little bit differently, but we still celebrate Pride um, here as a congregation. And throughout this month, there'll be opportunities for us to connect together. Uh, please remember that uh, on June 15th, and you can see this on page 8 of your weekly if you want to turn with me, uh, we will be uh, joining together for an event called Dallas Wings. Uh, they are playing, apparently, um, and uh, we are invited to uh, join with the Women's um, uh, Council uh, to join with them and to watch this game. We also want to remind you that on the same day, June 15th in downtown uh, Dallas, uh, they are lighting up the sky with the Art Walk, um, and they are specifically on June the 15th uh, doing a Pride Night. So we want to invite you to come and join us on that evening as well. And if you didn't notice, but uh, over this weekend, uh, the whole of Dallas uh, downtown has been lit up uh, with the rainbow colors, not just the uh, Omni Hotel, uh, but uh, many, many other buildings this year, uh, this weekend, have been lit up with the rainbow flag. And so we are grateful for the way in which this particular community is trying its hardest to be progressive and to be more welcoming to the LGBTQ community. So we're grateful for all the work that happens. Please do check out all of the ways in which we can connect uh, in Pride Month in your weekly uh, today, starting on page seven. Wonderful, and on page nine, um, we are of course coming into our season of our 48th anniversary. And so there are many ways for you to help contribute, for you to get more involved, for you to kind of connect more with others. We have our eclectic arc option. You've already seen some, maybe some of the pictures and ways in which you can um, figure out how you want to make your space at home more beautiful um, through the art we have here. We have um, our anniversary party, and we also have starting some anniversary dinners. So all of that information is on page nine, so please uh, take a look at that. We'd love to have you be involved in at least one of these options um, as we get towards um, our anniversary. You will notice that in the uh, lobby as you came in and as you will leave today, uh, those of you who uh, make pledges to this particular congregation, uh, your mid-year giving statements are available in the lobby following worship. We invite you to take, pick one up and to take it home with you. <coughs> My apologies. Um, so that uh, you know where you are in your giving. Uh, that also means that we don't have to mail it to you. So uh, please do help us out. Uh, by picking up your uh, uh, mid-year giving statement. And also, if you uh, were part of the Volunteer Appreciation Day, um, you would have been given some tickets for the raffle. And if you haven't yet already checked, please do check and see if you're a winner, uh, because we still do have some prizes that are left. So check your ticket, uh, check the reception area, uh, and to see if you were one of the fabulous winners of one of the fabulous prizes. Ooh. Yeah, fabulous. Bingo, bingo. Bingo. Absolutely. Like um, and today's <coughs> flowers um, in the chancel are given in honor of Scott Stout and Mark Wages, who got married yesterday. It was very exciting. So they are not here today. They are flying off on their honeymoon. We also want to uh, acknowledge and to appreciate uh, one of our own um, who graduated just recently with his Master of Divinity and who is on the chancel serving with us this morning, uh, the Reverend Todd Atkins Whitley. Now I know that he hasn't yet got the Reverend title, but it's very, <laughs> very close. So why don't you come and join me for a second? You know, uh, we, we, we appreciate the ways in which so many people graduate, and we'll be celebrating graduation uh, in just a few moments, but we wanted to especially acknowledge this morning uh, Todd Atkins Whitley. Uh, Todd uh, has now graduated. He's looking for his first call, um, and he and his husband uh, will be uh, perhaps leaving us uh, in the next few weeks as they begin their journey of transition to uh, experience what it's like to be in ministry um, in, in the United Church of Christ and uh, in many active and social organizations. And so this morning, Todd, we would like to honor you and say thank you for you. Thank you for being on the chancel. Thank you for wearing your Black Lives Matter badge. Uh, it really is important <laughs> to us. And of course, Romero, uh, ways in which I know that you experience your spirituality by being an activist amongst us, and we are grateful for that leadership. The Committee on Ministry uh, that uh, shepherded you through this process uh, would like to honor you this morning with this medallion as a way of acknowledging what you have done and who you are becoming. Let's uh, say congratulations Thanks. to Todd
And you can stay arisen. Don't, don't, don't need to sit down because we're going to get you to stand right back up again. <laughs> Let's turn to one another and offer a sign of hope this morning. God bless you. Our first lesson is from the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Hear these words. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says our God. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with a hope. And then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen.
today is graduation or promotion Sunday. Today we wish to celebrate the accomplishments of members of our community. And so we invite you to stand this morning if you are being promoted to a new grade or to a new school or to a new season of education. If you would rise where you are so that we can appreciate you, if you are moving on in college or you have graduated, or perhaps you've received a promotion at work, or perhaps you know someone who has been promoted or graduated. <laughs> it seems to take you a long time to rise where you are, but uh, if you don't want to rise in person, rise in spirit Come this on. morning. <laughs> Those who are able, we, we extend our hands out as this is both a blessing and a praise for them. Absolutely. Holy One, we give thanks for all that these folks have accomplished, and we await many more achievements yet to come. And God, we speak to every person, both in this room and outside this room. As you prepare for this next part of your journey, we hope that you remember the experiences you have had. Keep those lessons close to you as you continue to learn and grow. We give you all blessings of grace and love as you journey forth into what God has for you next. We thank you for the laughter and fellowship that you have shared with us and others. We have been blessed by your unique gifts. We are changed because you have been with us. And so we pray, God. We pray that God will give Matthew and Todd and others in this congregation will give you the strength and determination to develop new relationships with fellow students and colleagues that will help to strengthen and sustain your educational and vocational journey. Yes. We pray that you make wise and good decisions and hope your life will make a difference in this world for the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come, Holy Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, God. Jesus said, You 
or the salt of the earth. But if, a, if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lamp stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your God in heaven. This is the gospel of hope. Indeed, if you would be seated, and I humbly ask that you would open your hearts and your minds to the presence of the living God that lives within you and who breathes new life into each and every one of us. Let us pray. Almighty, loving, and gracious God, you who are all that we need, be with us, bless us. Anoint us by the presence of your Holy Spirit, both within us and among us. Help us as we come into this act of worship to open our hearts and our minds to the possibilities of a God who loves us, a God who is gracious with us, a God whose compassion abides with us. So it is in the opening of our hearts and minds, O God, that we are ready to hear, to listen, to act, and to respond to that voice that lives within us. And now, Holy One, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Throughout this month of June, we will be uh, celebrating and remembering many different events that are part of our community and part of who we are as we celebrate pride. Uh, We'll be celebrating and remembering the many events that center around our community, and on the last Sunday of this month, we will be inviting you to wear as many rainbow colors as you can so that we might come and celebrate Pride Sunday together, the reminder of Stonewall, which has been a landmark event. That's not to say that things didn't happen before Stonewall, but it is a landmark event in this country that brings forth the beginnings of the gay liberation movement, and we'll be sharing more about that as the month goes by. Today, however, we come to affirm this God who is within us and to celebrate Graduation Sunday. And although only just a couple of us stood amongst us, I know that there are many who have graduated in their lives. If graduation is really about transformation, then every one of us is graduating from something. 
graduating from some event in our life that perhaps we have moved on from, some events in our lives that we have needed to put to sleep in order that we might feel the renewing of the presence of God in our lives. And for many of us in this congregation, that is an ongoing, evolving process of being able to let go and to hang on, to let go of some of the toxic religion and toxic faith that has so found its way into the whole of the world, and to hold on to the truth of a God of grace and love and compassion to hold on in the midst of all that is happening in our world and to remain faithful to this God of grace. I will tell you that over this last 12 months, I have received emails from members of our own congregation who struggle so desperately with what it means to be a person of faith in a world that seems to have given up on the real message of Jesus. It's hard to hold on to a faith in a a God of love when it seems that the entirety of the Christian church has given up on love, given up on what it means to be a follower, a devout follower of Jesus, and have forgotten what it means to passionately live in that place where we stand with the oppressed and with the poor and the marginalized and those who have less than us. The whole sense of the gospel of Jesus Christ is one that encourages us to remember that there is always a future and we must always give them hope. It's why we are called Cathedral of Hope, a cathedral where for many generations we have offered hope to the world, a hope that makes a difference. It is that gospel that we must return to over and over and over again, and to remind us always that as followers of Jesus, we are not called to live the ways of the world, but we are to live in the ways of Jesus, the Jesus who was the revolutionary, the Jesus who was the itinerant preacher who went beyond the boundaries of his own faith, of his own experience, and began to enable others to find their place at the table. Everything about Jesus was about making the table bigger, not smaller. And this gospel that we preach in this church, a future and a hope, a future of a generation who are desperately in need of of spirituality, who say that I'm spiritual, not religious, because the religious will always fail us. Religious is always bound up in its tradition. The religious is always bound up in its way of finding power. But the way of Jesus is the way of speaking truth to power and enabling the world to once again find its center, to find its hope, to find its future. And Cathedral of Hope is one of those beacons, I believe, in this world that is calling us over and over again to find our hope, even in the midst of a world that seems hopeless. I don't believe in that world. I will not concede to that world. I believe that the world and what the world needs in this generation is a people who will keep their eye on the future and who will bring a word of hope to the hopeless. My favorite, favorite saint is Saint Harvey Milk, (laughs) who said you've got to give them hope. You've got to give the people hope. Hope is the one thing that each and every one of us needs if we are to see ourselves in the future, to see ourselves as part of God's creation, and to give hope to the hopeless. I believe that we need revival in the world today. I know that that is an evangelical conservative word, but I'm reclaiming it for Cathedral of Hope this morning. I believe that we need revival I believe that we need to find something within our own hearts that will set ourselves on fire and ablaze for this glory of a God who invites us to graduate every day of our lives, to find something within us that will keep us going, that will keep us faithful, that will keep us mindful of the values of Jesus, to 
bring us over and over again to the experience of our lives. An experience that is not, not dull, that is not boring, but is a life's journey that continues to explore itself within our bodies to find the presence of Jesus there and to live from that place of hope. I've found myself saying over and over again, more often perhaps in these days than in other days where I get up and and, and face the news of the day and, and have to remind myself, not today, Satan. Not today are you gonna steal my joy. Not today are you gonna steal my hope. Not today are you gonna take away from me that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine a future, and a hope. Jesus knew what that meant for his own generation as he spoke in this Christian text that we read this morning. If salt loses its saltiness, it cannot be resalted again. It is salt that is worth being thrown into the fire because it has lost its passion for a future and a hope. Many of us in the Christian church sometimes have lost our saltiness. We have lost that spice of life and have conceded to a world of hopelessness. Jesus invites us to be renewed and to be revived and to find within us some purpose and a hope that will keep us going, and not to be that salt that is worth throwing into the fire. Now, I know that salt can be bad for our health, But I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. I think what Jesus was talking about, that that salt, that spice, that that thing that, that, that wakes up every part of our bodies and reminds us of what we are called to be in the world, a saltiness, a spiciness. Some might even say a fabulousness but that presence in the world that will remind it and us that we are called to be the future and the hope. A future for those who have lost their faith, a a future for those who have had their faith stolen from them, a a future for those who have given up on church, given up on God, giving up on even believing that there are people of goodwill in this world and that we might be living examples of what Jesus went on to say, a light of the world. A light that invites us not to light that light and then hide it under the bedstead, but a light that takes itself and places it out into the world so that it might illuminate the places that need to be transformed that illuminates the places not just of the world but also of our own lives that need to graduate, that need to be transformed, to find that light and to allow it to shine. In our Hebrew text, we were reminded that God knows the ways of our lives. God certainly knew the ways of the lives of the ancient people, so much so that Jesus was sent into the world to remind them of the light, to remind them of their direction, to remind them that there was a future and a hope. And Jesus then left us with the commandment, the commission, to go into all of the world and to bring about a sense of good news. You hear that? Jesus said, I want to bring you good news. Good news. Why are we so focused on bad news? Why why are we so focused on, on the bad stuff that goes on in our world when perhaps we could be reminded of the good stuff that goes on? The folks who go to seminary and who will wear buttons that say Black Lives Matter who will go into the ways of the world and wear a button that says trans lives matter. That in this season of pride will wear our rainbow fabulousness and say that LGBTQA lives matter. And that all lives ultimately matter. It is that future and that hope 
the future for Cathedral of Hope as we put our new sign on the landmark of Cedar Springs. I know that people think that that's maybe not the way to spend our money, but I think it's the right way to spend our money because we need people to know exactly where Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ is. But the sign on the street is just one step in being a future and a hope. Placing ourselves right there on Cedar Springs speaks to the hundreds and hundreds of thousands that go to the airport every day, and the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lives that need to be transformed by this renewing of the mind of the salt and the light of the world. But what we do beyond the sign will really make the difference. What we do beyond the sign and the lives that matter in this congregation this day as we renew and remind ourselves and find that place of revival, as we find that place within us that keeps us moving forward to be that future and that hope. The ways in which we will care for the vulnerable and the less fortunate. For the many in our congregation who are passionate about youth homelessness in our city. And those who are working 24-7, I hear over and over again from those in our community who are finding ways to put together a project that hopefully will uh, uh, eventually bring to a youth homeless shelter here in Dallas, run by Cathedral of Hope and Dallas Hope Charities. It's what we do beyond the sign. But the folks who are working passionately about looking for affordable housing for, for LGBTQ plus and beyond seniors in our congregation and in our world who are looking for a place where they don't have to go back in the closet when they need to find affordable housing in our community. That they might live out the rest of their days out and loud and proud just as they were able to do in their own homes future and a hope. Cathedral of Hope, this is not just about building a, a church. This is about building a movement, a, a movement of people who are passionate about being that future and that hope. And it starts with you and me rekindling the experience of faith in our lives. This past weekend, we were, several of us were down at the South Central Conference of the United Church of Christ. There's a, a lot of words in there. But the South Central Conference of the United Church of Christ, and as a part of that conference, uh, I was uh, honored to be able to share in ministry with Reverend Dr. Joe Hudson, and both of us taught a session together on spirituality. And in that session together, and I want to tell you it was a, a wonderful experience, but in that session together, we talked about reminding ourselves of that moment when we just knew that God loves us just the way we are. I think sometimes we forget that moment. Now, I realize that perhaps for some of us that has been a, an evolving experience, but for me, I can look back on that one moment all those years ago, all those years ago, <laughs> when I knew without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what the church may have said, no matter what theologians may have said, no matter what parents may have said, no matter what an institution may have said, that I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God did not make a mistake that God loved me just the way that I was and the way that I am becoming. I look back to that moment in the times when I don't see a future, when I don't see a hope. And I look back to that moment and I go, whoo! Yeah, that's what I did, whoo! <laughs> I look back to that moment and I'm able to experience it one more time. I think that's what it was like for those early disciples when they came upon Jesus that day. And when they came upon Jesus and there was something in their body that responded. In their body they responded with a future and with a hope. 
I encourage us, Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, as we begin this month, as we live in this culture, as we know the experiences of our own day, to allow that salt to spice up the life and to take the light that lives within us and not to hide it, not to hide it, not to go back into our closets. My mother told me that when I came out of the womb, the closet was burned to the ground. (laughs) And I ain't going back in no closet. But to come out, to allow our light to shine, to allow it to be a beacon, not just to me, but to all the world. And to allow it to be a beacon of hope for the future. May God bless us. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we have a purpose and a meaning and a way for the world today, perhaps in a way that we yet do not know. May it be so as we keep our future and our hope alive. Amen. We were grateful as we can see our future that God is still working through us in the present. We invite you now to please pass the red attendance tablets that are in your pews. We ask you to please sign in, print. Uh, Our volunteers love to read legible handwriting. As well, update any contact info that you would like for us to have about you. We would love to pray with you, but also celebrate any praise updates that you have for us. I do want to invite you to turn your attention to the screens. We do have a special message around giving today. Some people still wonder what the biblical act of tithing actually is. Tithing is about giving your first fruits to God. Giving adds so much to our lives, and tithing is just one of those ways we talk about giving. Proverbs 3.9 says, Honor God with your wealth and with the first offering of all your produce. Tithing is all about giving the first of what we have to God. It's an act of worship, just like praying, reading sacred text, and yes, even singing our songs and praises to God. Many times in the Bible, people gave their first 10%. In the first book of the Bible, Abram gave a tenth of everything he had to the priest of God. Why 10% and what is 10%? So if you have $10, 10% is just $1. So essentially, you would give one dollar as a tithe or an offering, which would be a symbol of honor and blessing to your God. What does your one dollar actually do? Oh, it does a lot. Your offering helps make a difference in people's lives. It helps pay for supplies, outreach, ministry, staff, facilities, and many, many things that make a difference in the lives of those around the world and right here in our own city. Your $1 or 10% truly does make a difference. So today, give your offering as an act of worship. We know that we are truly blessed to be a blessing. This is why we give. As we prepare our tithes and our offerings, will you please pray with me? Holy One, we are mindful of all that you do in our lives We give thanks that we give now, God, right where we are in our present for the sake of our future. We give thanks for the blessings, the abundance that we already have, but also for the transformation that is yet to occur in our lives. Bless us now in Jesus' name and all the people say amen. God bless you.
<clears throat> beautiful, beautiful worship. So we are here in the moment of our community meal of love, and we are reminded that as Jesus was ending his earthly ministry, he in a way was graduating. He in a way was being promoted and also reminding his closest followers the ways in which they were to experience the world and live out his ministry in their bodies. And therefore, we all are reminded that in our bodies, we also carry the beauty of Christ within us. And so he took the bread at that meal and he gave thanks for it and he broke it. And he reminded them that his body may go away but the presence of the Spirit of Christ would live within them. And so they were to be reminded of that by taking of the bread and sharing it amongst each other. And we do that to remind us that we also bear the image of Christ within us. And then he took the cup and he poured it out, reminding them of the blessings of God that would be abundantly poured out in their lives that you may see and taste that God is good and that you may live that out in the world this day and every day. Let us pray. Almighty God, send the power of your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, especially on these gifts of grape and grain. Make them be for us holy food that nurtures us in body and spirit, that by sharing this feast, we may know the presence of the living Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come just as you Spirit call, come just as you are, come and see, come receive, come and live forever.
holy. This is holy ground. Thank you, Goddess God, for meeting us at this table of grace. Stay with us as we step into our futures filled with hope, because wherever you are is holy. Amen. Now may the blessing of God, the one who creates us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sustains us, allow us to always let our light shine. Amen.